Hello everyone and welcome to uh, Teachings in Education. Our topic of today is going to be response to intervention and it's often abbreviated just RTI. So uh, we're going to start off this uh, professional development and I just want to say, you know, remember, you know, we're all together in this, we're all a family, we're all trying to be better teachers and uh, better educators. So let's learn about the new topic. Okay. So uh, response to intervention, this is like a guide, this is a workshop. Uh, Workshop presentation, and here's a short video I always start off with that does like an overview. I think this is like a two minute long video and just gives you the real solid points here. But I'm going to skip this. Hello? Sorry. We're going to move on. All right. So quickly, uh, let's do an overview of RTI. So response to intervention, RTI, it's a framework to enhance student learning through remediation. And, and I probably should have underlined the word remediation is key here. So uh, this uh, RTI is becoming more and more popular over the past several years as a way to help struggling students, okay? It's targeted help towards struggling students. Now, uh, this, pre this presentation will provide one method of implementing RTI within a school. Uh, I want to say this. There's a lot of different ways that, that, that schools tweak and make things changes uh, for RTI, and, and different schools have different resources, and, and more importantly, some schools lack resources, uh, which can make it difficult. So this is just one way, okay? Now, uh, the RTI is a framework, and it's meant to use as a supplement to day-to-day -day instruction. A response to intervention isn't meant to replace it. It's not a replacement of instruction. It's just supplemental help. All right? Again, we want to help struggling students. Uh, schools, are, schools are to continue to deliver a viable curriculum and effective core instruction to all their students. That's, that's the basis right there. All schools should be doing that. Everybody should, all schools should have a viable curriculum and effective research-based instruction. So RTI incorporates instruction, research, assessment, and intervention within a multi-tiered system. There's three tiers we're gonna go over. And uh, these tiers are, are used to, to target uh, at-risk students. And that word at-risk has, has been uh, has some negative connotations with it. Uh, some educators have said on, on a couple of my videos, don't use the word at risk or whatever, but I'm just using it for now. Just just think of at risk student as just uh, students, uh, students that are in danger of failing, although it's a much broader sense. Okay, so it's a multi-tiered system to prevent at risk students from failing and uh, to facilitate student achievement. So RTI requires a variety of different school staff members working collaboration, working together. So it involves guidance counselors and child study team and case managers and teachers and administrators. Everybody has to work together on this, right? This is a this is a school uh, this is a school wide model. Uh, the purpose of RTI. So the mission is to first identify students that are struggling. The first, that's the first thing you got to do. You got to find out who's struggling for whatever reason it may be. Ed educators are then to provide, <coughs> excuse me, to provide these struggling students with support and resources to help them meet the demands of the academic curriculum. Schools provide resources, intervention, and additional instruction uh, in different academic areas targeted at the student weakness. Okay, we're always targeting the weakness. So uh, math and language, math and language arts are the major focuses of RTI. I'm not to say that, uh, you know, students struggling in science, we're not yeah, I'm not saying that's not important, but uh, remember, you know, uh, language arts and reading and things like that, you know, that's a part of social studies. That's a part, you know, reading is such a, a key component of education and mathematics and, and language arts, again, because they're standardized tests, they're so important. All right. Now, RTI versus special education this gets a little confused here, so I just want to go over this. Uh, RTI supports are different from special education in that RTI framework is designed with all students in mind. So RTI is not about focusing on just one student uh, and their needs. Our response to intervention is for general education students. Everybody should be included in this. Special education services are exclusively for students with IEPs, individualized education uh, should pay programs or plans. RTI takes place mainly in the general education classroom, uh, with most students receiving RTI supports and resources not being classified. Okay, not yet being classified as special education. RTI will have, can you know once you start tracking a student and everything that can eventually lead to that student uh, uh, being uh, classified as special ed. But at the moment, when you know they still have, you know for a student to be classified as special ed they still have to go do certain types of educational evaluation psychological testings or a whole bunch of stuff 
So uh, RTI versus uh, special education. Now, although RTI is quite different than special education, it may be used to it may be used as a measure to screen for special education services. RTI screening is often used with uh, to identify students with a specific learning disability. And this is just a little short video here. I'll put the link up if you want to learn about specific learning disabilities, SLDs as as they're called. Okay, so again, RTI is used as a screening method. Sorry. Keep going. Now, a typical RTI framework. Uh, different states have their own requirements and regulations. Uh, I, I think 49 states have opted into RTI. Uh, ne nevertheless, RTI framework must ensure appropriate instruction at the general education level. That's the, that's the first basis here. You want to ensure all schools and classrooms have appropriate instruction. Appropriate instruction is, descri is described as research-based and carried out by trained personnel. You know, when we say trained, that means certified teachers, okay? A reading instruction, for example, must include a systematic approach to teaching phonemic awareness, reading fluency, phonics, comprehension, vocabulary building. Research-based mathematics instruction must include direct and explicit teaching strategies uh, for high frequency priority mathematics standards, okay, and math certain, certain standards are, are, are higher frequency. That means they occur more often, and, and, and these standards occur in multiple different uh, courses and things like that. And those are the important things, right? Certain skills are, are, are just always there in math, and this relates to uh, reading instruction as well. So RTI recommends a holistic support, and that includes social, academic, and emotional goals. Okay, that's also part of it. Targeted instruction is the alignment of a student's individual needs. So when, when we say RTI is about targeted instruction, that's the alignment of the individual need uh, to the curriculum and learning through the use of research-based intervention. So it has to all match, right? You have to have the right strategy that, that matches the student's need, what, what's best for that student. A personalized learning model utilizes targeted intervention and is sometimes considered for most at-risk students. A personalized learning model uh, is a lot of time and it's a lot of effort and things like that. So that's why I say it's mostly for at-risk students, you know, to create that type of environment. Targeted instruction must be met with increasing levels of intensity, right, if achievement isn't met. So you start with level tier one. You have a basic intensity, and then if that don't work, you go to Tier 2, which is more intensity, and then Tier 3, which is even more intensity. So, uh, so like, each level will require further supports, okay, sometimes through scaffolding assignments or, you know, whatever. The more a student struggles, the more help or more support that student will need. Now, a frequent assessments uh, found in RTI, you know, those are your basics, formative, summative, diagnostics, they're all integral. Okay, assessment is, is key because remember we said RTI is about also diagnosing uh, uh, and, and screening sort of for students. Not really diagnosing, I should, I should say screening. Educators need to know if these interventions put in place are resulting in any success. So a curriculum-based measurements are the most common used assessment. That's just a, ba a basic CR, that's just a basic test that a teacher makes. But there are a variety of different assessments at the teacher's disposal. So like if a teacher is given just a, a let's say they're doing a lesson on on equations, then they give a test on that equation, and if the students are failing those curriculum-based measurement tests, then that's a sign that, you know, they're a struggling student. Standardized assessments provide readily available data because that's always there for you. It's something else you always want to take a look at. Um, so this is just an overview video of some, some types of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, some types of uh, assessments there. So a typical RTI framework, educational decisions on the student's behalf should be made based on a variety of information, okay? Uh, when deciding to move between tiers, uh, when deciding if a student needs any type of supports, again, it should be a variety of information, not just one test or one type of assessment, okay? Information gathered is to be used for changes in goals and academic strategies for these students. Uh, there should not be one sole piece of evidence that's used in making uh, major educational decisions, and that's that's that goes with 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 everything in education. It shouldn't just be one one tool. All right. So RTI and school policies. When students are identified as failing short of achievement, parents have to receive a written notification if their child's chosen to receive intervention uh, or any other uh, uh, you know. Or anything else provided by the general education teacher. So you have to you have to inform the parents, and, and that makes sense, right? 
when drafting a written notification on RTI interventions uh, the, uh, to the parents, you should consider the following. Schools should consider when the, given the written notice reasons for notification, what strategies are being used, the type of data collected on the child, uh, what type of services have been given, and the right to request a special education ele- evaluation. Because remember, RTI doesn't determine special education. It's just used as a screening method. So, you know, the parents can request it uh, and let them know. Uh, RTI and school policies. Policies must be put in place for school-wide pre-referral and interventions for RTI. Remember, before remember these interventions are used before students are referred for special education services, right? This is before. So this is already this is a pre-referral before they're even referred for special education services. It's recommended to create a data and intervention team that collaboratively devise and plan regulations here. This is really important, and maybe I should have put this earlier, but these data and intervention teams, these RTI teams, they're very important because they're going to, you know, make decisions, they're going to keep an eye on the student, they're the ones that, that are going to, the data and intervention team or the RTI team is the one that, that really, you know, enacts, implements these, uh, implements the, the tiered system. So school RTI policies and regulations should also address the following topics below. So what are the policies? And, you know, as we said here, that the data and intervention team can devise a plan and, and they could help on the policies. Usually administrators deal with writing policy. Um, it should address the following topics below. A criteria for identifying the level of intervention. So what, what makes it that a student should be in Tier 1 or Tier 2 or 3? You need criteria. How, how do they progress monitor students? What type of research-based interventions are used? How do you collect the data? Evaluation methods for effectiveness. You should, whatever you do, you have to evaluate. So you have to evaluate if this RTI is working. And uh, criteria to, de- to determine the possibility of, of a learning disability, right? So criteria for when you should just refer someone uh, to special education services. Students with failing marks will have their instructional programs in mathematics and reading evaluated to make sure teachers are using research-based strategies. And a lot of this goes back on, again, a lot of this is targeted at the, the general education teacher in the classroom. Academic tracking of student performance in these two areas are essential for identification. All right, so the multi-tiered intervention, I, I, like we said, it's a framework, and uh, it's going to be three tiers. And students receive increasing levels of support as they advance through the tiers. So as students advance through the tiers, let's say from tier one to tier two, that student who's now in tier two still gets the same report as get still gets the same supports as in tier one, meaning tier one has has your basic supports, which I'll go over, and then t- when a student's in tier two, they get tier one reports, they get tier one supports and tier two, and then tier three would subsequently be you get tiers one, two, and three supports. So. RTI is kind of similar to the continuum of services and represented with a pyramid. Uh, here's the pyramid where Tier 3 is intense support, Tier 2 is targeted instruction, and Tier 1 is just core basic instruction, right? So Tier 3 at the top uh, has the smallest number of students, but it's the most intensive. So even though there's not many students, there's a lot of work going on there. Uh, tier 2 is in the middle, and, and Tier 1 is the, the, the most students. Tier 1 serves the most students. Uh, the approximate number of students that are serviced at each level of the RTI pyramid are as follows. Okay, tier one, one to five percent, tier two, five to fifteen percent, and tier three, eighty to eighty-five percent. So your most of your student body is is uh oh, you know what? This might be inverted here. Uh, sorry. This should be tier three, tier one, and tier two. Let me just let me just go back real quick here. Just change this real quick. Almost made that because I don't want to forget that one. Okay, let's go back to present here. Sorry about that, guys. My apologies. Right. So at the top, so tier one serves the most students. So eighty to eighty-five percent of students are satisfied and they're served in tier one, whereas tier three is like you know just one to five percent. So let's look at tier one intervention. Uh, response to intervention tier one is called primary instruction. The tier includes all students within the general education classrooms. And at this level, schools must ensure proper instructional practices. Teachers are required to use research-based instructional practices as well. So this is your primary instruction is tier one. 
School leaders and teachers should stay up to date with educational practices. That means professional development, kind of like what you're doing now. And they should evaluate and reflect on their effectiveness. The most important person in Tier 1, again, is the general education classroom teacher. And the special education teacher as well, uh, you know, for the pullout replacement rooms. But those students have already been identified and targeted, uh, the specialized students. Okay. Uh, effective classroom teaching. Here's a, a video I made. It's, a, it's an in-depth video. I think it took me uh, it took me hours and hours to make here. And it just basically goes over all types of uh, everything that they really need to know for instruction that goes into teaching here. So effective classroom teaching is the first line of defense to ensure students succeed and don't fall through the cracks. So this video is a detailed overview of effective teaching. Hello and welcome. Hello I mean, and welcome to Teachings and Education. I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, progress monitoring and screening. Okay, this begins in tier one. Okay, and but it takes to, you know, progress monitoring and screening takes place throughout the whole process, but it begins in tier one. Guidance counselors, child study team administrators should partake in evaluating longitudinal evaluations. That means we're tracking the students over, you know, years of time. With regard to assessment, RTI schools consider alter alternative approaches to measure progress. So it doesn't have to just be, you know, it doesn't always have to be a classroom test. Okay, you know, you can use portfolios are, are, are a great alternative. Some students are poor test takers, right? Uh... Study skills classes is something that schools can consider can can consider to help out those poor test takers. Study skills will help them learn how to study better and, and some test taking strategies. I think always think that's very helpful, that course. All right, so that was tier one, right? We said it's primary instruction, mostly the teacher, evidence based, uh, evidence based, uh, sorry, research based instruction. And, you know, that's where tracking kind of begins. Now we're on to tier two. This is small group instruction, right? And uh, it takes place for students that have not been able to advance in tier one. So students don't students only go to tier two instruction if if tier one supports aren't working. In tier two, they're given the opportunity to learn in smaller group settings. Uh, students should not be pulled from core uh, classes, mathematics or reading. In tier two, educators reinforce basic concepts. If a student's in deficient in math, operational skills, remediation can be put in that area. Uh, tier one aims to supplement. This tier aims to supplement tier one instruction, not replace it. Okay, tier two is a supplement. It's always a supplement uh, when we're talking about RTI. Students should continue to work on the same material that they're learning in the general education classroom, but in small groups, maybe maybe with a you know a math coach or something like that. All teachers and educators must keep an eye on tier two students. Uh, there needs to be careful monitoring of these students. Uh, tier 2 students are the ones that need that extra attention uh, that they're missing from large group. Uh, tier 3 students are considered to be the most at risk. Okay, So Tier 3 is the most at risk. Tier 2 is at risk, but Tier 3 is really at risk students, let's say. And that's what we're going to get to now, Tier 3. So tier, tier 3 requires a serious intervention that takes place for students that continue to struggle in both Tier 1 and Tier 2. And this tier, schools further increase time and frequency of instruction. It may be challenging to find the time, okay, to get these students the extra help. Guidance counselors also help, often help with arrangements and things like that. Uh, students in Tier 3 require individualized learning goals. Okay, learning goals should be smart, which means specific, measurable, achievable, re relevant, and timely. Tier 3 content specialists and learning coaches are often assigned specifically to students to help them reach their goals. For example, a student may see a reading specialist every Monday and Wednesday. We have that at, uh, at my school. And this is just a look of, uh, this is just a quick infographic about some learning objectives, uh, about smart objectives. Okay, tier three, some students will still not be able to academically, socially, or emotionally keep up with their peers. That's the fact. In that case, students are subjective to comprehensive evaluations uh, with the possibility of becoming classified for special education services. Now that's under IDEA, the Individual with Disabilities Education Act. So if Tier 3 is not working, we're going to refer them to special education uh, evaluations. By the time a student reaches Tier 3, data should have been collected on that student from Tiers 1 and 2. Data will always, divide, uh, will always drive decisions. Now, uh, students cannot get classified for special education services simply from RTI data. So the data from RTI can't make a student uh, be in special education. They still have to be tested by trained school personnel, for example, in LDTC. 
uh, or somebody that uh, is trained in interpreting and delivering these types of special education evaluation assessments. Okay, a little bit. Uh, so let's just look at the big components now. We're, we're almost getting near the end. Several key components necessary for successful RTI must take place. You need the data teams to make informed data and, uh, data driven decisions to collect the, and sort of implement the plan. So you need the data team. What is the point of collecting all this data without a team to evaluate it? Okay, the team also evaluates it, and they have to develop action plans and strategies and things like that. Uh, and the invo involvement of family is key. Uh, schools often forget how important it is to involve, uh, how important the family is on the academic success of a student. Parents and guardians should be involved in every step of the way. And effective instruction, that, that's that tier one, it's so important. You have to have good instruction. Sometimes, nowadays I feel like schools, uh, we kind of forget our instruction and we focus too much on just assessment and grades, but instruction is really key. RTI must support and empower students, excuse me, it must em support and empower teachers with quality professional development. Okay, quality. And, you know, the professional development should be kind of individualized to the teacher. Some teacher might be bad in classroom management. That's what they get. Another teacher's bad and, uh, you know, has trouble finding good content activities. That's what they get. Continuous assessment is the last component here. Okay, I, and I know, I, I, I again, right, RTI is used for screening, so universal screening and academic tracking provide insight to the student's weaknesses. And again, right, you can use this and screen, and that's how we can identify uh, special education students. Schools can begin to take a look at the curriculum and decide if there are any potential bias. Okay, uh, that's a good one right there as well. Remember, we said schools should have a viable curriculum, one that uh, you know engages all learners. All right, so. That was it for this uh, response to intervention uh, uh, training. I want to say thank you guys for showing up here. I'm going to try to get some cool topics as, as we continue. So.